I'm Bob Picozzi. In the first two games of the series, the Celtics have held the lead for only 68 seconds. Trailing two games to none, they'll host the Hawks tonight in Game 3 of their NBA Eastern Conference first-round playoff series, 8 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN2. Celtics guard Isaiah Thomas, 12 for 36 in the series. Jay Crowder, 6 for 25. Coach Brad Stevens expects them to bounce back tonight. They're not having tough shooting nights for a lack of focus or effort or anything else. They're just, um, you know, they struggle a little bit, but that's okay. I mean, they'll have those nights, and, and we've got to have other guys pick them up. The Celtics have lost their last seven playoff games. He received 101 of 130 first-place votes. Portland guard C.J. McCollum, the runaway winner today in the voting for the NBA's Most Improved Player Award. They've lost the Stanley Cup playoff series despite a 3-1 game lead five times. The Caps up 3-1 again. Try tonight for a second time to put away the Flyers. Game 5 in their Eastern Conference first-round series will be in Washington. The season ended for Duke forward Emil Jefferson after only nine games because of a broken foot. He'll return for a fifth year, the NCAA approving his request for a medical hardship. Want an easy way to see if you could save money on car insurance? GEICO gives you three. Call 1-800-947-AUTO, go online to GEICO.com, or stop by the GEICO office nearest you. Three ways you could save 15% or more. This is the Sports Hub on ESPN Radio 1420, 107.1, Northeast South Dakota's Sports Talk Show. On the air on 1420 AM, 107.1 FM, and streaming on ESPNAberdeen.com. Now, let's head to the studios with Ben Root and David Tewksbury. Welcome on into the Sports Hub, ESPN 1420, 1071 on the web as well at ESPNAberdeen.com. Download the mobile app there at ESPNAberdeen.com or HubSeedRadio.com works as well. And you can listen worldwide on your mobile device with the Internet connection. Follow us on Twitter, too, at ESPNAberdeen, at Root, 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 and at David Tewksbury also. Coming up on the show today, we'll talk a little bit of tennis here in just a few. Joining us for the first time this season and for the first time ever on the program, as a matter of fact, uh, the new head coach for the Aberdeen Bond Cali Boys tennis team, J.D. Carrolls, will join us here in a few minutes, and we've also got a look at some activity from yesterday from the local sports scene. It was all high school activity yesterday after we had all college action on Wednesday. And we'll uh, look at the schedule here this weekend that has been altered for the local teams on the diamond. One game is already in the books here for the weekend, and a second game is now in the bottom of the second inning over at Fossum Field, a field that will see four games if all goes now as scheduled here for today. So we'll uh, keep an eye on that. Let you know what's going on in those games uh, that uh, are taking place or have taken place at Fossum Field for NSU. And go over that updated schedule for the weekend as well. Talk a little bit about the Twins here also. And uh, get you set for a pretty busy sports weekend uh, here in the uh, Hub City area. So a lot of stuff going on out there, including some uh, tennis talk, like I said, with uh, Ron Kelly head coach J.D. Carroll joining us in just a few. But, uh, you know, nice Nice weather weekend uh, today and likely tomorrow for some sports action. It feels great here. We've got this, you know window open in the studio, which we don't do very often. Trying to make it feel a little more comfortable in here. and uh, It's feeling good. It feels like baseball weather out there, although maybe a little on the cooler side. But, hey, it's not, not too shabby, and I'm not going to complain about it for sure. Yeah, it feels like a nice spring day, doesn't it? I yeah. think this weekend uh, more of the same. They're saying that on Saturday. 78 degrees, a whole lot of sunshine, probably the day to get outside and do some sh- uh, some chores around the house. But, you know, if you, don't have, uh, if you don't have anything going on, definitely want to check out some baseball because, and softball as well, we'll get into that later. But, yeah, this weekend, kind of hit or miss. It's going to be basically hit on Saturday, miss on Sunday because uh, they're calling for some rain and just blah type of weather on Sunday. And that's basically going to roll into next week. i got my meteorologist hat on right now. That's rolling in to do next week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We're supposed to be just in the low th- low 50s. Might even struggle to hit 50 next week, Monday. It's kind of weird how it's, it's going to be 78 degrees and sunny tomorrow. Then by Monday, it's going to be 50 and, and lousy and crummy. So that's, that's, uh, that's spring. That's why I, I cannot stand spring. It's why it's my least favorite season of them all. Of course, I'm more of a fall guy myself, but... Now, that's just me, but uh, I do like baseball. That's the only redeeming quality of spring, and as far as I'm concerned, that's that's it. That's all I got. You're anti-spring over there. I am oh. very anti-spring, actually. Matter this is of fact, terrible. it's my least favorite season. It You're goes uh, fall, winter, summer, spring. Cannot stand the spring. It's terrible. 
only, I mean, this is the only time of year where you can have a day that's 80 degrees and the next day it's 45 and rainy with some snow in the air. Uh, that's garbage. Yeah. What's wrong with that? I think it's awful. It's terrible. Can't stand yeah, it. You're the only person I know complaining about spring. Unbearable. I know, I know, really? people, I know people with terrible allergies and they mm, are yeah. all right with spring. And you don't even have allergies. I, I do. Maybe you'd be. Uh, I do a little bit. Uh, I'm, you're not Mr. Red Nose or anything mm, over not, here. Not too bad. It's not as bad as some people, but it's it's it pops up. It's in fits and starts. So not, well, sorry. Keep it under control. I'm a huge spring hater. I'm sorry, Apparently. but I'm not sorry. I don't, you know, spring just, hater. That's that's me. Tis tis. You're welcome. Shame. Shame oh, on me. For shame. Shame on you for <laughs> liking spring. No, come on. Spring's fun. It's renewal. It's uh, the rebirth. It's, the season of new green. life. Exactly. No, I, I it's again. Amazing. <laughs> listen to me, some George Carlin. He's got a great bit on baseball and football, and he talks about that. In, in uh, baseball, it begins in the spring, the season of new life. Football begins in the fall when everything is dying. <laughs> he's he's got a great bit on that. Very very clean too. It's actually radio friendly. It's about four and a half minutes. You know, I I always wanted to play that on the air, especially when you were gone. But uh, you know, just to fill some time and what have you. But Never got a chance to do it. Oh, well. It's very clean. It's good, good wholesome humor, <laughs> which doesn't exactly happen a lot with George Carlin, but it's good, it's, it's good people. Well, uh, speaking of comedy, we've got a lot of different things to talk about on the show today, of course. I uh, mentioned uh, we were looking at some of the activity yesterday, some track and field, some boys' tennis, some golf. We'll go over briefly. You can get all the details right now at our website, uh, so you don't have to wait for us if you like. At hubsitradio.com, and click the uh, stories there, the high school scoreboard. As uh, that's all, of course, free of charge at hubsitradio.com, driven by lustalba.com or espnaberdeen.com as well. Uh, but since you're talking, uh, you're talking funny stuff over there, yeah, and uh, what have you? Have you seen? I, you know, I love. We've talked about it at least briefly before. I love minor league baseball. It's the best. You know, out of all the sports, they do the most fun stuff. You got sure. the food. We've talked food stuff. I talked even in, in more depth on some of the major league ballparks food when you were gone uh, that week. Uh, probably a wedding. I don't even know anymore. Uh, but uh, have you seen what's going on with the uh, Brooklyn Cyclones and a bobblehead they've put together? I don't think they, so. They started apparently a salute to Seinfeld night a couple of years ago in 2014 oh. with a bobblehead. Really? And that came with a Keith Hernandez bobblehead that year. <laughs> this year, they're helping you fill out that uh, Seinfeld tchotchke collection there you go. as they give away a Roger McDowell second spitter bobblehead. <laughs> it's... It's uh, it's just gorgeous. He's looking through the bushes oh, and uh, kind of kind of the lips puckered here. The second spitter bobblehead for the <laughs> Brooklyn Cyclones. Oh, that's gold. Uh, it so was McDowell. <laughs> you can probably because they were spilling beer on him and cursing him at him in the bullpen. You can get that on July second if you happen to be going to New York. Go to a Brooklyn Cyclones games and there's oh yeah, there's a nice clip we could watch that. But sure, uh, if you purchase the team's Jay Peterman package, apparently. You get a Jay Peterman bobblehead, uh, complete with golf clubs and a Make America Get Great Again T-shirt. Oh, nice! Man. That is fantastic. So, uh, just another fantastic thing somebody's doing. You gotta love that in minor league baseball. You, you know, that's kind of interesting. You bring up minor league sports like that because the Milwaukee Admirals they every year have a Seinfeld night, and they are the team in uh, in Milwaukee that they play at the old Bradley Center, now the BMO Harris Bradley Center. But they play; they're a minor league hockey team. And they have a Seinfeld night. And a couple of years ago, the Soup Nazi was there. <laughs> he was there. <laughs> they had the Soup Nazi there. And I think two years ago, they had, um, oh, what is the, the little guy's name? The, uh, the little person. Mickey. They, oh, had, Mickey, yeah, they yeah. had Mickey on, uh, who was there a couple of years ago. And they had him on, uh, on the radio there. It's a big time deal there in, uh, in Milltown, which you'll be enjoying, what, next month? Yeah, maybe. Do you we'll have see. Do you have the itinerary all kind of geared uh, up and ready it might, to go? It might be uh, mixed. We might not be going now. What? So. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Because of the... Well, we'll yeah, talk about, yeah, sure. Other things going on. Sure. But, okay, well, that's fair. But if you get a chance, if, if things uh, kind of free up for your schedule and what have you, I, I kind of set your itinerary there. I feel like I was, I was getting, you know, writing down, you know, basic... I feel like I was the one going on the trip, but... Hopefully uh, you, you you might you'll make some time and be able to do it because it's a great town, a lot of fun. Yeah, a lot of cool stuff there. I was looking at, uh, I was planning that a couple of weeks ago, kind of perusing some of the some of the options, and yeah, it's uh, man, a lot of cool stuff to do. 
tough to decide when you when you know you only have a few days here yeah. or there or what have you. So well, that was like my family and I going out to the Black Hills. We went out there for Easter weekend, and you know we're supposed to you know hit this, this, and this, and we have so much stuff that we want to hit. And you know I just, you know I didn't want to leave you flying solo here on the sports hub. Uh, so I think I did just one day though. Yeah, but, I, that, that's fine. But, and, and then you end up with snow. Is, oh, that's what. Gosh. Then you get things like weather that just throw a wrench, in, monkey wrench in there, and you don't get to even do as much as you're hoping. Exactly, which really kind of stunk. But you know, we still had a lot of fun out there, and yeah, it, it's that. You know, vacations are tricky. I mean, you're trying to squeeze all these things into just a short, short time span. But uh, I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens. Yeah, and, and hey, if it hadn't snowed, maybe you wouldn't have had the. Buffalo lick in your car because that's the, true. The ice or, very, or the salt or whatever. That's exactly you. what my, my mom was saying. <laughs> Absolutely, it's a very good point. So um, we'll uh, talk about all the things going on in the sports world. Maybe even uh, talk some Prince here as well as yeah, uh, that's where right. he was found. Yeah. Uh, passed away yesterday. Uh, Target Field uh, doing a little memorial there as well. There's some uh, interesting couple tweets here that I might uh, toss out there. Uh, they're kind of interesting also. And uh, we'll we'll maybe go over some of that info as well. But can I just do a really yeah. just really quick toss this out? Uh, Northern States beating Minot State in game number two of their doubleheader in baseball. They're up four to nothing in the top of the third. Okay, so four nothing that one. And we'll Northern, get on that later though. Northern took that first one by the way, looking for a doubleheader sweep today. Playing very early because of the Smitty's games later on tonight. Uh, Thirteen to two, game one. Coming up next, we'll talk tennis. Though head coach of the Bron County Guy Squad. Uh, J.D. Carroll's will join us here in a moment on ESPN 1420-1071. Dakota Ranch Beef in beautiful Aberdeen, South Dakota is looking for experienced meat cutters. If you're interested in becoming part of a winning team, we have positions available. Dakota Ranch Beef is a brand new facility. The company offers a 40-hour work week, paid health benefits, competitive wages, referral program, a sign-on bonus for gutters, split saw operators, leggers, butters, chuck boners, clod pullers, tenderloin pullers, and ribeye boners. If you're interested in joining a winning team, call 262-2333, extension 1. 181 ask for Mary. That's 262-2333. Fresh, fast, and friendly. Convenience your way. Airport Travel Center and Cafe. The Airport Cafe is now taking applications for a full or part-time cook-slash-kitchen helper from 6.30 a.m. till 2.30 p.m. Apply in person at the Airport Cafe on East Highway 12 in Aberdeen. Wages depend on experience. Fresh, fast, and friendly. Convenience your way. Airport Travel Center and Cafe. Dave's Marine and Webster is having the 17th Annual Open House, April 22nd and 23rd. Two big days in two large showrooms filled with a full line of quality brands. Lund Fishing Boats, Bennington and South Bay Pontoons, Malibu and Access Tow Boats, and Sea-Doo Personal Watercraft. Don't miss this annual event with all the accessories you want and need. Can you imagine? All this at Dave's Marine, the 17th Annual Open House, April 22nd and 23rd. Don't miss the boat. Get to Dave's Marine now. Don't miss the 8th Annual Chili Cook-Off Fundraiser to benefit Relay for Life to fight cancer. Saturday, April 30th, 5 p.m. at the Yildiz Shrine, Chili Judging at 6.30. Adults, $10 to get in, half that if you're entering the Chili Contest. Kids, 12 and under $5 with beverage included. Check out new this year smoked barbecue rib sampling by Box Alarm Barbecue. RSVP to attend or enter the Chili Contest at 605-216-1909. Call or text or email justinf at midstatesgroup.com. So, so much, much sports. sports. We have to put it on two stations. Oh, have you not heard? ESPN Radio 1420 107.1. You're listening to the Sports Hub, ESPN 1420 1071 on the web too at ESPNAberdeen.com. It's Ben and Dave here with you on this edition of the Hub. We'll check out what happened uh, yesterday. That's right. You can also watch us on uh, Facebook. You've got the uh, link on there to watch us. Live and direct with the video there, kind of to my uh, back right uh, side, back into the right of you, where I am. And you can see why we're on radio, not TV. That's right. Uh, D- Dave, uh, you get the full front of his face, so uh, we're sorry about that. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> there you go. Uh, time now to talk some uh, tennis here on this edition of the Sports Hub. And Jordan is head coach of the Everdeen Ron Kelly squad on the guys' side, as uh, they are coming off of a nice victory against Pierre yesterday. And Coach J.D. Carroll joins us. How are you doing, Coach? Hey, good. Thanks for having me, guys. Yep, our pleasure. And, uh, well, so far, um, you know, been able to get most of your events in here. Had, uh, you know, a few things you weren't able to get in uh, so far, part of the Rosado Rumble against uh, Central and what have you here and there. But 
Uh, so far, a lot of events in. How do you feel the guys are playing here in the first, I don't know, third of the season, it looks like, roughly? Yeah, yeah. Was, uh, the season's about a third of the way done. And, um, yeah, I'm very, very up proud and uh, happy to happy with the effort that our guys have been their guys have been showing. They've been uh, um, playing really well. They're a young, young group of guys, but I'm really uh, learning a lot, and they're uh, helping me out, especially as this being my uh, first year coaching. Now it's funny because we you know talked to Coach Kurtz uh, you know, one or two weeks ago about his squad. His squad was young, uh, but they have experience. Um, how are your guys? I know you've got uh, you know just one junior. Everybody else is sophomores and uh, earlier, which is even younger than his squad. Uh, do they have some playing time though at the varsity level? Yeah, no, um, yeah, ju- um, our team is kind of very similar to Coach Coach Kurtz's at Everton Central. We have uh, yeah one junior and uh, four sophomores and then a freshman, like you said. But um, we do we we are returning four of our top six. So um, yeah, we we do have a lot of uh, varsity experience on our team as well. Seeing as how it is your first year as a head coach over there at Ron Colley, have you reached out to other tennis coaches around the area? Has anybody kind of stepped out and maybe taught you the ropes there a little bit? Um, uh, I, I can't say really anyone's uh, stood out and uh, helped out, uh, I guess, or stood out over any any other any of the other coaches. But, uh, yeah, no, I've uh, reached out to uh, um, pretty much uh, uh, all the coaches from the other schools that I know and uh, can uh, remember back from when I played at Ron Colley. And they've all been uh, extremely helpful, giving me kind of words of wisdom and uh, just kind of helped me out being that uh, I'm kind of learning things for the first time on the uh, um, coaching side of the court instead of playing. Yeah, you got a couple freshmen on your program. Is Have you kind of brought those guys aside and been like, hey, like, it's a, my freshman year too. Is that is that been kind of a nice transition for you there a little bit? Yeah, it definitely, uh, it definitely has been nice. I know um, – with me, with me being a little bit younger, I can uh, r- relate pretty easy to a lot of the, to a lot of the situation that um, kids are going through. So uh, that's I think uh, helped me out a lot, and I think um, the kids knowing that, that I have played and uh, just being a uh, um, younger individual, it's just uh, I think helped them uh, relate on, in certain aspects and certain situations while they're playing a match. So I'm going to do a head coach of the Ron Colley boys tennis team here. Coach uh, J.D. Carroll's with us on the Sports Hub. And, um, first year, what, do you, what has been the biggest uh, kind of challenge here through the first part of the year here for you? Um, biggest challenge, I would say, is probably uh, um, trying to keep an eye on six different matches going at once. <laughs> um, Actually, I, I mean, I played just not, not too long ago, and it was just kind of worrying about my own match and making sure I got things done, but now when you're on the other side coaching, you kind of got six guys to worry about and kind of uh, um, we'll watch each one of them and make sure you get over and talk to them and uh, help them to uh, win their match. Now you mentioned you know you haven't uh, been that far removed from playing, and I know Coach Patton over there on the boys' golf team is uh, awfully young here too because he didn't, you know, not too far removed either. Are you guys able to bond maybe on that side of things since he's got his first year in the books or two years now, I guess? Yeah, I know. Um, I'm sure. I'm. I. I haven't had a chance to talk to him at all, but I'm sure uh, we can definitely uh, relate in uh, many different uh, aspects when it comes to playing and coaching, being uh, younger coaches, and just being able to relate to the guys. And um, but yeah, I haven't had a chance to talk to him, but I'm sure there's a lot of uh, similar um, aspects that we've had to go through. Oh, actually, on that aspect too. Now that I think about it, um, is your sister Erica, or is that is she related to you? Or? Yep, that is correct. She's okay. my younger sister. So, yeah. you guys, so you guys both have really good sisters that were awfully good, too, because you had Rachel who went on and played college golf, too. So there's another point you can bring up, I suppose. Yeah, I guess, yeah. I uh, I was not aware of that, but, yeah, that's definitely, uh, definitely a um, correlation between us. You know, you were talking about how you're still kind of a younger guy and you used to play the sport. What are practices like? Do you get out there on the court with the guys and kind of school them there a little bit and kind of use that maybe as a competitive advantage at times? Um, I I try to every once in a while. I know it's, uh, um, for, for the most part, I try and uh, have the kids, the kids play, uh, play against each other and do drills and uh, such like that on the court. But uh, every... Uh, Every once in a while, I kind of get a kind of get a 
itch to get out there and play a little bit. And so uh, I'll get out there and try and uh, we'll, we'll work the kids around the court and they have fun with it and enjoy it, and so do I. Were there certain drills back in the day that you just couldn't stand that you try to try, uh, try to stay away from now that you're a head coach? You know, it's funny. Um, it's funny you mention that because there were a few drills that I kind of just despised, even <laughs> for me playing in high school and uh, um, at the collegiate level. And now I see myself as I was coaching. I just, I'm like, oh, those are such good drills, and I'm making, I'm making my kids do them. And just, I, I can, I'm just looking back, and I'm like, oh, I remember the pain I was going through. Um, doing these drills back when I played. Yeah, so now that you uh, can, you know, don't have to do them, I guess, then as long as they are doing them and not exactly. you. Slogans at them, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And then you can say, I, I went through the same thing, too, so you got that going for you. Yep, yep. Talking to Coach Carroll's there with the Ron Kelly Boys tennis team. Um, as you look at the, the field this year, uh, you're having a really good uh, start to the season. Um, who would you say are some of the favorites, though, uh, when it comes to uh, going after the state title? Um, well, like state titles definitely always have those. Uh, the two Falls schools are um, usually up there. Um, and uh, the two Falls of Gorman, two Falls of Lincoln, and uh, Mitchell. But then you got the um, Rapid City Stevens from uh, Rapid City there. They're always a uh, top tier team. So I said between one of those four, I, I can see one of them taking it. But uh, I plan on. Uh, um, our guys having a really great showing at State, and hopefully we'll be able to place in the top eight. And that'll be out in uh, back to Rapid this year, right, I think? Yep, back to Rapid about May 18th through the 20th. All right, so that's, yeah, coming that's up coming already. up, yeah. <laughs> it's awfully quick. Mm-hmm. Um, and you guys took a trip out there earlier this year. Did you do, uh, I can't remember, I think that was, or maybe that was just uh, Central. Did you guys yep, play? That, yep, yep, that was just Central. Okay, um, yeah. Yeah, the uh, the Rapid City schools came here and played us during the Rosado Rumble. Rumble, yeah. And uh, yeah, we ended up we ended up on the wrong end playing Rapid City Stevens, but uh, um, ended up on the right end when we played Rapid City Central. Okay, so at least you've uh, got to play them and uh, see how mm-hmm. that goes. Does it make much difference going out there to Rapid as far as you know elevation and anything like that when you play? You know, it, it, it does make a little difference when you get up there a little higher elevation. The the game since seems to get a little quicker. The balls seem to bounce a little higher, and the serves and, um, and strokes seem to um, um, go a little bit quicker and faster. So it's definitely a little adjustment when we go out there, but um, uh, when we go out there, we'll be sure to get a couple of practices in before we play so our kids can get uh, acclimated to the playing conditions. Is there a difference that you, or I should say, is there a surface that you guys that prefer to play on? Do you guys play in terms of uh, clay, or do you guys play on grass, or is do you, do you have a preference between the two? Um, well, personally, I um, personally I love playing on clay. It's a little slower, um, a, a little easier, put a few different spins on the ball. But here in South Dakota, we we'll, uh, we don't have that luxury. Everything we play on here is a hard, is a hard surface. Okay. So um, it's it's a pretty even playing field for uh, um, all the coaches and all, all the players since you play on the same court and surface throughout the whole entire season. I think we need to uh, propose that next year for the uh, activities association. Maybe they can have a have a rotating deal for the state tournament or something. Since it's you know usually Sioux Falls are rapid and. I don't know. It seems like uh, almost every other year there's some sort of rain. So just have that set up indoors, and there you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe that is something we could propose. But uh, yeah, tough to get everybody on board with it. But it'll be neat. Um, well, uh, thanks for joining us on the show. Appreciate it. You've got uh, some contests coming up. You playing tomorrow? Is that? Or am yeah, I thinking tomorrow of we play Harrisburg and Sioux Falls Christian. Okay. Have you? Uh, you haven't seen either of those teams yet, have you? No, I haven't seen either of those. Um, two teams, and those those two uh, organizations are both new from um, my playing days. They uh, didn't have teams back when I played, so I'm kind of looking forward to getting down there and uh, playing those new organizations. We'll, we'll see how it goes down there. Have a uh, great rest of your season. We'll catch you again down the line. Thanks, Coach. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. That's head coach of the Aberdeen Ron Cowley Boys tennis team, J.D. Carroll, in his first season there with the Cavaliers. Joining us on the Sports Heavy, ESPN 1420 and 1071. So, uh, yeah, you could sounded like you uh, you know on the younger side kind of the younger voice there and i think <laughs> some stuff to uh, bond with pat Noel over even though they're different sports yeah i was just kind gonna funny. i was just gonna say you know when you're uh, when you're that young as a head coach it has to give you just kind of a just a slight advantage i feel like you know a lot of times when you're in high school 
and at least in my personal perspective, when I used to play high school athletics, which didn't last very long, <laughs> my head coach was kind of a younger guy, and you know, it was it was easy to bond because he was saying, you know, basically, hey, I was doing this exact same thing, you know, five six years ago, and I feel like when you're going up against uh, that's that's the way you look at it. You're going up against a head coach sometimes when you're young. You think you know everything. You're 14, 15, 16 years old, and your head coach is like. 45, 50, 55 years old, you just know, you, there's just, there's part of you that's just like, what does this guy know what he's talking about? And he's, he just thinks he knows everything, and of course, you know everything when you're that young, so when you're, I, I just, I don't know, there's something about that. When you have a younger head coach, it's just easier to listen, I feel like. That's just my personal perspective. Yeah, it, I could see it both ways. Depends on sure. the kid, but uh, maybe a little more relatable and uh, that type of thing, so, you know, it kind of makes sense. Yeah. So uh, thanks to Coach for coming on the show here and uh, joining us on the program. Coming up, we'll uh, look at, uh, actually, let's look at some of the high school notes right now. And uh, then we'll take a break, look at some of the other stuff on the college scene and what have you. But uh, wrapping up your high school talk, uh, it was Ron Kelly beating Pierre yesterday 8-1. to one, And Aberdeen Central beat Pierre 7-2 to two in some boys tennis action here in town. Uh, also, the Miller invite was yesterday in golf. Aberdeen Christian took first place ahead of Vips, which by only five shots. They had a good showing there. Then it was Miller and JVC for the guys. Kramer Johnson had the low round with a 77 for Aberdeen Christian. He was actually tied with Judah Aderhold for the same team there, but uh, tiebreaker went to Johnson over Judah. And Ezra Aderhold ended up in sixth place with an 86 there. Uh, for the girls, low round was a 98 from Miller's Aaron Moncour. No team scores kept for the five schools that took part in the girls' competition. And for the Redfield relays yesterday, 24 teams running, jumping, and throwing in Redfield. Get all the details, as I mentioned, at ESPNAberdeen.com. But some of the highlights there, Redfield Dolan won on the girls' side, followed by Potter County and Northwestern. It was Potter County's Grace Crook taking home most outstanding female athlete honors. And for the guys, that award went to Sam Van Orman of Ron Kelly. That team came in third place. JVC was second, and Warner was the number one team in the team competition there. As for the weekend goes, uh, like uh, Coach mentioned there, track and field, or, uh, tennis team is going to be tomorrow in Harrisburg, and it'll take on not just the host team, but Sioux Falls Christian. Ipswich relays are tomorrow. Another huge track and field event on Saturday in Ipswich with Ron Cowley, Aberdeen Christian, Groton, Langford, and a bunch of other teams out there. And for today, track and field in Watertown, Aberdeen Central taking part in some Friday competition out there, along with some of the uh, A schools like Webster and Siston and Hamlin. Um, and you've got Aberdeen Smitty's baseball at uh, Fossum Field tonight, a doubleheader. They host Pierce starting at 5 o'clock. This evening, meanwhile, Northern there at Fossum Field, uh, like we mentioned, picked up a win in game one against Minot and now hold a 4-2 lead in the bottom of the third with two runners on the bags. And, uh, nope, base is full now for Jack Schmidt. Oh, oh Let's boy. see how that goes. You know what uh, You know what could happen when Jack Schmidt's at the dish? He could uh, hit a jump. Ding, 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 <laughs> ding. See what I did That's there? That's nice. Oh, sorry. Uh, all right. It's all right. <laughs> Uh, it had so, to be done. Come so on, man. We'll, we'll Sometimes you've got to throw that out there. Keep an eye on that and uh, talk about what's going on in the college scene coming up here in just a moment. Here at Sports Hub at ESPN 1420, Why pay more when you can pay less, a lot less, on over 100 cars, trucks, and vans today from the Aberdeen Chrysler Value Lot, including more than 50 best priced under five grand. Stop by today and check out this 2011 Chevy Malibu LT. Alloy wheels, CD player, moonroof, and all the power options. Best price of just $89.99. Or maybe this 2009 Ford Escape 4x4. Local trade and looks like new. Best price today, just $76.89. Or how about this 2008 all-wheel drive Lincoln MKX. Heated and cooled leather seats, power lift gate, and much more. Best price today, I get this. Just ten four eighty nine, and be sure to check out a twenty ten F one fifty Super Crew four x four, five point four V eight, and loaded with accessories. Yours today only twelve nine ninety nine. Don't pay too much for your next pre owned vehicle. For the largest selection and lowest prices, stop by the Aberdeen Chrysler Center Value Lot today, or check them out online at aberdeenchrysler.com. Totally Tubular is your stock steel and aluminum headquarters. Totally Tubular offers the largest stock steel and aluminum inventory in the area, along with great prices and quality customer service. Totally Tubular should be the first call you make when your project is in need of steel or aluminum. You can find Totally Tubular at 703 2nd Avenue Northwest behind the Auto Plaza or call them at 725-3012. Totally Tubular, your stock steel and aluminum headquarters right here in Aberdeen. 
Primrose Retirement Community is putting on its second annual rummage sale Saturday, April 30th from 8 to 3 at 815 North 2nd Street. All the proceeds will benefit Relay for Life. They'll have clothes for the whole family, household items, toys, baked goods, a lemonade stand, and even a lunch special from 11 to 1.30. They'll even have a number of vendors there as well. So check it out on Saturday, April 30th from 8 to 3, the Primrose Retirement Community Second Annual Rummage Sale benefiting Relay for Life at 815 North 2nd Street. Office managers, you have heard claims about managed print services saving companies a small fortune. By nature, this program increases costs exponentially. If you have or are considering MPS, call Dakota and Contoner at 226-5900 for a true cost comparison. As more sunshine continues this afternoon, highs will stay up in the low to mid-60s. Winds will, meanwhile, stay to the southeast about 5 to 15. For tonight, we can expect partly cloudy skies and a low near 49. With southeast winds through the night, the temperatures warm up into the start of the weekend with a mix of clouds and sun Saturday and a high of 78. Right now, 55. So, so much, much sports. sports. We have to put it on two stations. What are you talking about? ESPN Radio 1420, 107.1. It's been seven hours and sixteen days since you took your love away. It's a sports hub, ESPN 1420-1071. And since I'm throwing this in, in honor of Prince. Prince, that's not Prince, Ben. Prince didn't sing that song originally, Ben. Well, Prince wrote that song and Chris Cornell covered it. There you go. So there you go. We cover a bunch of folks. And don't have to mention Sinead O'Connor, huh? No. But, so there you go. Well, you just did. I did, yeah, I know. Okay. Whoops. That's all right. But, uh, yeah. Problem? It's, <laughs> uh, Prince, of course, uh, passed away yesterday, and autopsy to be done today, they say. And uh, from what I read, probably going to be weeks, actually, before we find out. I don't understand. It's like sometimes you find these things out quickly. Other times, oh, it's going to take forever. Yeah. I, you know, I'll, I'll never understand that. I'm just... Uh, that's just part of how it is, I guess. You yeah. just kind of accept it, like, oh, okay. Yeah, that's that's like it's one weird. thing you never question, is it? You know, yeah, kind really. of the, the layperson, it's like almost 24 hours later, you find out what, what that person died of. And then with some people, like you said, it's weeks. I mean, it's like going to the uh, it's like going to the auto parts store, and they're like, well, you're going to need this, this, and this, and uh, it's going to cost you this and that, and then you're just like, yeah, fine, okay, yeah. that sounds good. Yeah, you hope, to, you just... Cross your fingers, you're not getting hosed. Oh, sure. You're getting, you know, somebody's trying to rip you off. Yeah, the 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 girder of the uh, Smithsonian uh, belt there needs to be fixed. You see that little black smudge? Yeah, that's not good. You blew a uh, a, a head microphone, and you're that's like, right. yeah, okay, that's a, how much is that going to run me? The flabber gasket's exactly. uh, totally broken. You exactly. need a, just an entire new system there. Yeah. So. Uh, if you include the uh, the power source on that, it's going to be an extra thousand bucks. But you know, you really should. Otherwise, you're looking at another five thousand in two years. Yeah, oh, that's right. Okay. And you're just like, yeah, okay, let's go ahead and do that then. That sounds great. Oh man, but uh, some of the stuff that was done with uh, with Prince here, some interesting stories coming through uh, on MLB's uh, website. Um, they show uh, how the Twins changed not only. Uh, Target Field, uh, as we mentioned, that uh, they put purple on pretty much everywhere there's a digital screen. It was just purple. Wow. And then on the big screen, uh, they had uh, Good Night Sweet, I think it said Good Night Prince. No, yeah, Good Night Sweet Prince, and then had a picture of him uh, up there. Uh, but the Facebook page for Minnesota, the Twins, uh, just a purple hue on everything there. Uh, also, apparently, Prince is part of the Twins Clubhouse tradition. I didn't know that. It says yes. here. Yes. All rookies have to know the words to Little Red Corvette. I did hear that. So that's kind of kind of cool. And kind of a funny video that's been tweeted along with that. Uh, I think I saw Tori Hunter singing uh, singing Little Red Corvette and all, and just the awful singing of these guys. I mean, don't get me wrong. I am a <laughs> terrible singer, and I have no shame about it either. I will sing until the cows come home. It, it, it never ends well, but I, I, I sing, and you know, I look at those guys. Those guys may, make me look. Look like a you know a fantastic singer, which is saying a lot. But yeah, you know, that's that's kind of a cool little tradition that they got going on there. I'm sure that's going to live forever as well. And uh, the final thing here was uh, they released the number of uh, names for babies named Prince, and how there was just a huge boom in the 1983-1985 s- 
span, and then again in 2010, according to the Social Security Administration, now the numbers here, how much it went up. And the biggest boom really was 84 when Purple Rain came out. And when was Prince Fielder born? 84? Mm -hmm. And apparently, uh, according to Gary Fraley, who's a sports reporter at the Dallas Morning News, uh, mainly a baseball reporter, he says, yes, Prince Fielder was indeed named after Prince the singer. His mm -hmm. mom was a big fan, so that's uh, he's probably not the only one either. Oh, guess, cer so. certainly not, and uh, one thing that was kind of cool growing up, I've, of course, I'm a ma massive Simpsons fan, always have been, always will be, but when I was younger, I didn't really know a whole lot about Prince, and there's one episode where Homer just screams Purple Rain, and I'm like, oh, that's kind of funny. Then it just kind of kind of hit me, oh, that's that's a Prince song. And then there's another bit where Milhouse is shaking the hands and uh, giving another hug to another Milhouse from Shelbyville, essentially. He looks exactly like him. And Milhouse is hugging him, and he says, so this is what it's like when doves cry. <laughs> Never even made that comparison, or uh, made that connection, I should say. And, you know, I, I saw the picture of it tweeted out yesterday from one of the Simpsons' uh, Twitter handles, and I thought to myself, wow, Prince really had a massive impact on the world and this this really stinks you know i think he was uh just a phenomenal artist you know I, it, it, this is crazy ben i'm gonna take you this is this is real okay prince is such a big deal that he got mtv to play music videos again mtv was showing music videos of prince there yesterday i, I saw a tweet about that and uh had to give it a retweet which it was which was phenomenal and i was sitting there thinking to myself wow if if prince can get Med, um, um, MTV to show actual music videos again. That's got to be a pretty big deal. And for me, one of my favorite songs ever from anybody is uh, is Let's Go Crazy. I love that song. And growing up, I was a, still am, a, a, a big Milwaukee Bucks fan. And they used to play that song all the time with their uh, their street team. Their, they had, I think that was called like Street Sound or something like that. And, uh, you know, just a couple, you know, folks off the street would play music there in the Bradley <laughs> Center. And Let's Go Crazy was always their go-to. And I thought to myself, wow, that's a really cool song. Who sings that song? My dad goes, Prince, you ever listen to Prince? I said, no, not really. And I heard that song, Let's Go Crazy, and that intro with the organ and the dearly beloved, oh, my gosh, that's just, that'll send chills up your spine every time. And this, uh, it's, just, it's just really unfortunate. It really stinks. Yeah, one uh, person here on the MLB website saying, hey, Twins should do a Purple Rain Out. Uh, not have the game rained out, but have purple bats and yeah. jerseys and shoes. But I don't, I don't think they'll go that far. But hey, who knows? They've got time to, to plan. Still on the road right now on a road trip there in Washington. So uh, taking on the Nats uh, today, tomorrow, and Sunday. And of course, those games all will be right here on ESPN fourteen twenty one zero seven one. Uh, Twins this evening at six oh five start time. Tomorrow it'll be twelve oh five and then twelve thirty five on Sunday there, in Bryce Harper territory, mm -hmm. if you will. Uh, yesterday, a nice 8-1 to win at Miller Park. Ricky Nolasco's had three good starts, and he's 1-0 on the season right now. Gave up just uh, one run on five hits, seven strikeouts, and uh, went six-plus to get the victory there. Miguel Sano went deep for the second time this year, and the team finally got a road win this year. First time they've done so all season. All it took was going up against uh, Taylor Youngman, who had a 9 ERA and had that even go higher. Give it up uh, three runs. Actually, it didn't go higher. Three runs and four plus innings, so I guess he lowered it. That's just sad. Uh, six walks and four hits for him. Uh, mainly it was the walks that hurt him in the game. And the Twins get the victory, so we'll see how it goes for them tonight in D.C. Uh, as far as the uh, local scene here, your baseball and softball teams all move their games up here to today and tomorrow rather than playing Saturday Sunday. That goes for Northern and for Presentation College. As for Northern, they picked up a win in game one here today. In the baseball realm, they uh, knocked off Minot 13 to two. Oh, I wrote it on my Saturday schedule. Whoops, 13 to two, and uh, the Beavers really helped him out out there. Six errors in the ball game. Ben Allen two for two, three runs, three ribbies, three runs for Matt Stubbs who was one for three, three ribbies from Easton Lopez who was one for three, and Mikey Bernici walked a couple times was one for one, scored twice and knocked in two. Nick Hofford, the complete game win, didn't allow a single earned run, both runs unearned, three hits, three strikeouts, and no walks. A solid effort from him, and uh, here in game two, as they look for the doubleheader sweep, four to two advantage. That ball game in the bottom of inning number four. Nobody on two down for NSU. Uh, the softball team, meanwhile, we're going to go at the top of the hour, and uh, that's what you want to watch more than even the baseball team, I suppose, right now. Baseball is struggling, it still has a little bit of ways to go. They're at five and ten now in conference with a win today. 
Uh, snapped a 10-game losing streak, by the way, for Northern Baseball, which was good to see. Uh, but the softball team uh, comes in today in the final playoff spot. And actually, let me see. They have updated this. Looks like some other teams have played uh, now. So 8, 9. Northern actually moved up, uh, tied for ninth. So SMSU must have lost because uh, SMSU and Northern now have the same 11-15 and 15 record. Uh, both teams are just a half game up on you, Mary which would be the first team out of the playoffs if it started all of a sudden right now. And then St. Cloud is one game out with uh, four games to play for Northern this weekend. Wolves are at home today and tomorrow. They'll honor their seniors tomorrow. Four players, actually three seniors and one junior eligibility-wise, who is actually graduating, though, Brittany Lash. And then the seniors are Kaylee Maiden, Kelsey Gale, and Macy Engel. Uh, they'll play Crookston starting at one tomorrow. Try to do that South Dakota largest tailgate again so you can get out there, get some grub, and uh, maybe play some... Uh, Cornhole or whatever you want to do out there. They'll have different games set up there, too, and uh, bleachers and such. And uh, today they will host Bemidji for the games. That'll be at 2 o'clock here today. Bemidji comes in at 12-9. and nine. They're just one spot ahead of Northern right now in the standings. And then uh, against Crookston tomorrow, Crookston sits there 3-23, uh, and 23, worst record in conference play right now in softball. So their playoff uh, hopes are dead, but uh, Northern is hoping to get in, and they'll see what they can do to help their cause this weekend. Presentation College, baseball is on the road. They moved them to Friday, Saturday, like I mentioned there. Mayville State, their destination today and tomorrow. And PC Softball is at home. They'll start each day at 1 o'clock, and that's today and tomorrow at uh, home at Manor Park is where that is. The Dome is, uh, I assume, deflated. It was supposed to be at least. And uh, Dakota State and Mayville today. Actually breaking news on that. I uh, just saw a tweet, Kim, come through just within the past couple minutes here. Due to weather, the Dome deflation will now be on April the 30th hmm. through May the 1st. Okay. So it'll be there for another week. So they're going to leave it up just in case, I suppose. Just which in case, yeah. I didn't. I, I thought that would be a good idea anyhow, but I hadn't heard anything. Yeah, and so. it's supposed right. to be kind of crummy next week anyway. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week, probably quite a bit of rain. And, of course, on Sunday, it's supposed to be almost 100%. Well, not 100% chance. Nothing's ever 100%, especially with weather. But uh, they're saying that there's a pretty solid chance for rain on Sunday. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, it looks like rain is supposed to be in the mix. So they're thinking, hey, might as well just kind of keep it around just for another week just to see if something happens, and we can can always be a contingency plan. Yeah, I'm trying to see what their schedule is like for softball next uh, 30th. That would be next Saturday. They're supposed to be well, on the road. Hmm. So, yeah, that wouldn't uh, really matter at Bellevue. So, yeah, there's no more softball games on the schedule. Unless, unless one of them was made up that they're trying to slip in there somewhere, if they can sneak a game up and... Yeah, I guess I suppose that's possible. Something like that, or just making sure they can get uh, practice in indoors sure. and what have you. I guess too, mm -hmm. uh, if it doesn't hurt to to keep it up, if they are able to do that, then uh, I guess they'll go ahead and do that. So mm -hmm. uh, we'll let you know if anything else changes on that front. Uh, so that's what's going on with the uh, local teams there. But uh, yeah, PC hosts Dakota State at one today, and then Mayville State after that, and that's today and tomorrow. The other two teams will play uh, have already played today, I guess, because uh, they played first or the other way. No, they'll play after the two PC games today, and then they'll play the first game tomorrow at 11 o'clock between Dakota State and Mayville State. So that's a look at uh, what's going on in the college scene, with the exception of one other event, that's track and field tonight. If you want to go check that out, it's a twilight, uh, one of those times where they, you know, don't do it very often, but they get out there in the evening, 4 o'clock tonight. It's your NSU twilight at Swisher Field this evening. All right, we'll take a break here, come back and look at some of the other pro sports notes. We've got... Uh, also, some wrestling news for NSU. They announced five student-athletes for next season. Get all the details on them at ESPNAberdeen.com, of course, for free, too. Uh, we'll talk about the uh, pro side of things. Uh, I've got some notes about uh, these ballpark prices that I've been trying to get to the last two weeks. Yeah, we've got some time here. We'll talk about that. Maybe talk about the postseason in the NBA and NHL as well next year on The Hub. Glacial Lakes Energy, a corn ethanol industry leader, is expanding their production team by adding four plant operator positions. Plant operators are responsible for the operation of a state-of-the-art production facility. This includes startup, monitoring, and shutdown of equipment, sampling, and testing of the products. Successful candidates will be mechanically inclined, team-oriented, and results-driven. To learn more, go to www.glaciallakesenergy.com. 
check out the huge selection of pre-owned cars, trucks, SUVs, RVs, and vans today at the Har Motors Bargain Center. They have over 60 vehicles in stock. Hurry in for the best selection because the inventory changes daily. The Har Motors Bargain Center has vehicles with payments as low as $99 a month. Great financing options are available. The Har Motors Bargain Center at harmotors.com. Right across from Arby's on 6th Avenue at Aberdeen. Cars has the cars. In towns all across South Dakota, it's your banker, the kids' little league coach, and your brother-in-law who are the firefighters, EMTs, and first responders. So when you drink and drive, the whole town will know it because they're the first on the scene and maybe the last faces you see. Do the first responders in your town a favor. Volunteer to be the designated driver. You be the hero and give them the night off. Brought to you by the South Dakota Office of Highway Safety, the South Dakota Broadcasters Association, and this station. Aberdeen's free spring residential cleanup runs April 29th through May 14th at the Brown County Landfill. Additional drop-off sites available April 29 and 30 only at Jensen's Rock and Sand and the Brown County Highway Department on 8th Avenue. Most items are accepted with a limit of four car pickup tires per customer. All loads must be covered and secured and there is no 8th Avenue access to the landfill. To find out more, go online to browncountylandfill.org and click on the 2016 free residential cleanup tab. Get all the scores and more online on ESPNAberdeen.com. It's Sports Hub, ESPN 1420, 1071 on the web at ESPNAberdeen.com. Ben or Dave here with you. Follow us at ESPN Aberdeen, at Root Root Root, at David Tewksbury. And you can follow us as in like watch us with live video on our Facebook page too, facebook.com slash ESPN Aberdeen. Uh, let's look at uh, some of the pro sports notes after uh, we give you just a couple other college notes here. NSU Wrestling uh, announcing five editions for next season. Uh, the one that you know will be right here in Aberdeen is Chauncey Gettles, a uh, 5'9", 125-pound wrestler for the Golden Eagles, two-year starter. With the team and uh, senior season, 37 and 14, 17 pins, 55 takedowns, ended his career with 70 victories. So uh, he is going to be a wolf and stay right here in town. The other recruits, Samuel Truen, a 5'875 pounder out of Minneapolis South. If Truen sounds familiar, that's because he is related to Nick Truen on the football team there, uh, but uh, not out of uh, Bear, White Bear Lake, if memory serves right, is where uh, Nick is from. Pretty sure that's it. Uh, so, uh, not it just says related here. I'm guessing maybe a cousin or something. I don't know for sure, but nonetheless related. Uh, Harrison Townsend comes in out of Iowa, Ames, Iowa, six one two eighty five. Then a couple from Cali, Richard Casillas, five six, one hundred twenty five pound wrestler, out of Northview High School. And then the other one comes from Orland High School, Stephen Abbott, six two one eighty four for him. Uh, also on the college front, uh, USD has uh, no, apparently has found their. Their coach for the women's basketball team, and uh, according to the athletic director there, it's Don Plitzewite. Uh, she'll be the 10th women's basketball head coach. Yeah, gazoon time. Uh, formally introduced Monday, 11 o'clock, at the Munster University Center Pit Lounge on campus there at USD. Uh, 188 and 93 record, winning percentage of just under 67% in nine years as a head coach, guiding programs to 19 winning seasons and 21 years of coaching at the D1 and D2 level, including 10 NCAA tourney appearances. Uh, Plitz White led teams to eight postseason appearances, highlighted by an 06 NCAA Division II championship when she was at Grand Valley State. Also guided Northern Kentucky through the D1 transition with four straight WBI berths. Uh, started a coaching career at alma mater, which is Michigan Tech, under her collegiate coach back in 95, Kevin Borseth. And they paired up for uh, 11 seasons with 11 with uh, different stops at the Michigan Tech, Green Bay, and Michigan and uh, 95 Michigan Tech grad. She earned back-to-back Great Lakes Intercollegiate Athletic Conference Play of the Year awards, four all-conference honors, three all-defensive team nods, and is from West Bend, Wisconsin. But that's okay. We won't hold it against her. Oh! What? How could you say that? Oh, wait. Oh, that's right. Hey, I love West Bend, <laughs> Wisconsin, man. That's uh, that's the birthplace of the summer of Tukes. East. <laughs> it's a true story. It's all about East Bend. Oh, all about East Bend. No, you have no idea about East Bend. Is there an East Bend? We don't talk about the East Bend people. No, I don't think there is an East Bend, but it, there's a South Bend. We know that. So, well, well, that's different. Well, that's a given, but yeah. different state. 
Yeah. But anyway, There's probably an East Bend in a different state then. I could probably say that. I mean, come on. Well, be that as it may. <laughs> hey, man, West Bend. Don't don't knock West Bend unless you've been there, especially when you get up to the Tewksbury Lake House. Who? Right there on the... Uh, Right there on the water, right there on Little Cedar Lake. Tell them Dave sent you. Tell them Dave sent you. That's right. Come on by. <laughs> we should have like a contest or something, and the winner gets a weekend trip with me. They'd probably be like, how about, how about you just go ahead yourself and leave me at home? The winner gets that? <laughs> <laughs> what do the losers get? Oh, <laughs> yikes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, Stuff in my head while I'm drowning, <laughs> for goodness sake. Uh, let's look at some baseball notes here. Of course, mentioned the Twins got the win yesterday. And recently, uh, the folks at, uh, I don't know, WebStaurantStore.com. Yeah, sure, that's those, a, is those, that a thing? Those famous people. That's something. Uh, they put together this list as far as how much it costs to go to a ball game. Okay. Now, uh, how did they figure this out? Uh, the, the three main factors. Tickets, obviously. Gotta, we're, t- yeah. we're talking baseball. Baseball, pro, yeah. Pro baseball. Baseball games. Pro baseball. Got to pay for your ticket. Okay. What else would you have to have at a ball game? Maybe a mitt. Got to have a... No, I mean, what would you buy there? I think I'd buy a mint. Um, maybe some gotta food, have, a, some hot dogs. Got to have a hot dog. Maybe a beer. Got to have a brewski. Okay. Except me, because I don't drink beer. But that's, you know, besides the point. Peanuts, scorecard. Yeah, they're only doing the three things. Okay. Peanuts, I would think, should be in there, too. You're I right. would agree. But uh, hot dog, beer, and ticket prices. Where are you getting gouged? Well, uh, got to be beer. They've put the numbers together. But, uh, well, I mean, as far as which ballparks. Okay. Well, I mean, some of these are crazy expensive. Other ones are, hey, you can go watch a good game for cheap. Mm-hmm. And uh, your family can actually you know, afford to go together. You don't have to leave little Joey at home or something <laughs> like that, which would be kind of messed up because he's the one that likes baseball. Absolutely. Why don't you bring in Joey? That's messed <laughs> well, up. Well, he couldn't afford. He couldn't afford to bring Joey. Uh, parking isn't in here either, which is, to me, another factor sometimes. Although, if you know where to park, at least in uh, Anaheim, you can you know, park for free. But mm-hmm. got to be in the know like some people. <clears throat> Um, and, and Those be, people are nameless, though. <laughs> and yeah. be willing to walk a little ways. Okay. It's not far. Yeah, I don't mind doing that. You can you can usually figure that yeah, stuff out. Yeah, I'm going out. to a Cubs game next Friday, so these these are all very important things. Cubs game. Where did I park for the Cubs? I don't know. I park, No, we just rode the L from the hotel. Take the L, sure. Yeah, we did that the whole way. Okay. So that was good. That's uh, It's exercise. Yes. Uh, we didn't drive anywhere when we went to Chicago, as a matter of fact. We took the L everywhere, and then I saw the traffic and said, I'm not getting anywhere until we leave. Yes, That's it. absolutely. Oh, you, want, you want to stay there to the better end because everyone wants to leave early. <laughs> and when everyone leaves early, there's no point to beat the traffic because there is the traffic right there. Exactly. Everyone has the exact same mindset. doesn't work out that way. Oh, man. Uh, looking at uh, the prices here, um, let's start with the beer prices. Where would you guess would be the most expensive beer prices? Um, on the list here. I would guess Yankee Stadium. Yankee Stadium, no, not in the top five. Really? Yeah, surprising. Well, maybe Wrigley Field. Wrigley Field. Because they have they have a beer there that I believe is eight fifty. That's about how much I spent the last time I was there. <laughs> Holy eight, smoke. Eight fifty for a beer. It was an IPA. It was very good, very tasty. You have to kinda of nurse that through a few innings. You don't just down IPAs, especially when they're costing eight dollars and fifty cents. Well, this uh, this must be just for a regular beer. Okay. I don't know. Domestic? I suppose. Probably I would guess seven bucks. It's uh the the highest price here is seven seventy five. Okay. There's two places. You got another iconic ballpark. Fenway? Yes, sir. Okay. Fenway, seven seventy five. And in that same kind of neck of the woods, Citizens Bank for the Phillies, seven okay. seventy five. But what in the world? Twins fans. You better uh, write your uh congressman, I don't know. Seven fifty, yeah. Seven fifty at Target Field. You're next on the list here. Yes, that doesn't seem right. Again, that's for domestic, by the way. I, I went to a few Twins games last year, and yeah, you know, I got an IP. I think I got a Summit IPA out there. I want to say it was about eight bucks. Mm. So that's that's for an IPA. So yeah, domestic seven. Yeah, that sounds about right. It's painful. Ugh. Yeah. So it's the top three on here. They give top five, but uh, I don't know. I think. They might be missing some. So I'm just going to say top three. Okay. Those are your top three most expensive, least expensive. Uh, you've got... Uh, I, I would guess. I'm going to take a guess. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to say Tampa Bay, where the Rays play. No, that's, that's a good guess, but no, that's not on here. Mm, that'd be my guess. you got warm areas, though, for sure. Somewhere out in Cali, maybe? Well, I remember I told you about... Arizona. Arizona is, uh, yeah, tied for the lowest. Okay. Arizona and Cleveland. Okay. 
four dollars. Four. That's it. Four dollars. Oh, they're like they're paying you to drink beer. <laughs> it's almost half the price. <laughs> Twist my arm. <laughs> All right, road trip. We're going to Cleveland. And, Wait, what? And no. remember, I told you how the you know Artie Moreno when he bought the team, like his next year, he said let's lower beer prices. He cut a dollar off. He, sure. Angels are at four and a half, four fifty. In SoCal, it's, bad at all. that's pretty insane. Absolutely, it's actually tied with Oakland. Okay, so uh, two of the uh, you know four lowest are are uh, in in California, where it's expensive, you know, to more expensive to buy your beer outside of the ballpark apparently than to uh, get at the ballpark there. Or just don't drink beer at all. I hey, mean, like me, see, I'm saving big bucks. Yeah, you're a better man than I. <laughs> I'm t- I'm doing it. As for the hot dog, most expensive hot dog, different uh, different places here. The most expensive Fenway Frank. Uh, nope. It is the Metropolitans. Really? Okay. New York Mets, six and a quarter. Six and a quarter for, a, quarter a, for dog a dog there. Jeez Louise. Man. Miami's right behind at six bucks. Oh, you're getting that extra quarter at the Mets, too. They're kind of sticking it to you here. Yeah, we're sure getting a quarter are. from everybody. That's a joke. It's a rip off. Uh, Marlins are next to six bucks, which they then don't, you know, spend on their team. <laughs> and then Good the point. The Dodgers, which I remember seeing the other day. The Dodger Stadium sells more hot dogs than anybody in uh, in big league baseball, and by a huge margin. I'm just guesstimating the numbers here, but I believe it was 1.4 million for second place for the season. I think that was the Yankees, mm-hmm. and the Dodgers were in first place at uh, a million more. They were at 2.4, 2.5. Wow! It's just a huge amount, and it's all because of well, everybody knows the Dodger dog. Sure, right? right. It's just a hot dog. Yeah, it's yeah. It's just because somehow famous. it got famous with. Be in the name. I don't know. Alliteration can do a lot for you. Fenway Frank. Yeah, exactly. There you go. So uh, the Dodger dog is making bank for the Dodgers at five fifty for uh, wow. just a plain old hot dog there. I remember back in the day when I used to go to Cubs games when I was in high school. They were I think four bucks, four four and a quarter, four fifty mm. maybe for a for a dog. But see, the thing is, the Cubs are actually competitive now, so they can just drive <laughs> prices right up. <laughs> so I mean, there's that's the price you're paying when your team's actually worth something. Yeah, I mean, either way, you're you know you're selling out and your place yeah. is full. So it's true. It's kind of funny, but uh, when you're happier because the team's winning, you're willing, s- willing to spend your wallet. Your wallet's sad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the cheapest places I can't believe this one dollar in Cincinnati for a dog. One. That's what it says here. Wow. I don't know what's in that. <laughs> Eat at your own risk. Lips and you know what. <laughs> exactly. Great American ballpark. One buck. Uh, wow. Orioles a buck fifty in Baltimore. And they're a good team too. Yeah. So these are these are pretty shocking and maybe most surprising. Yankees, which was second in, on sales and uh, you know third on the list as far as the cheapest one, three dollars. You're kidding me. So there's nobody in the two dollar range apparently. Wow. It's kind of strange. That there, is. But. That's very strange. Well, if you do go to Miller Park and you go to a Brewers game. Forget the hot dogs. You've got to go with the brats. Yeah. Go with the brats or Polish sausage. I mean, you will be so thankful. I mean, your arteries might not be so thankful, but trust me, I, you got some of that crisp crowd on there. Oh, man. Now I'm starting, I'm starting to get hungry again. I just ate. This is not yeah. good. Sorry I started to bring up yeah, this food is, again Yeah, this here. is the problem. <laughs> <laughs> My waistline's furious. Oh, man. So uh, that's a look at the, the food, the beer, and the... Uh, and the hot dog, um, I thought it had ticket prices here, too, but they kind of went a different route here, doing a, a groups, a group deal here, ticket, hot dog, and a beer for different stadiums. So um, looking at the cheapest here, they say it uh, looks like the the cheapest place you could go would be Arizona. Okay. Uh, 49 46 is what they estimate for you and a friend to go to a game. It's not too bad. Uh, each of you, twenty four seventy three your ticket. I guess average. I don't know what it is, uh, where they're please. coming up with the average for that, but sure. uh, about eighteen bucks for that. The hot dog was two seventy five there, and it had the cheapest beer at four bucks there. Okay. Uh, so about twenty five bucks in Arizona to go to Chase Field. On the other end of the spectrum, going to Boston, uh, about thirty bucks more, fifty four dollars, seven seventy five for your beer, five and a quarter for a hot dog at Fenway, and your ticket's going to cost you a little over fifty two dollars. Wow. That's what happens when you have only so many seats. Yeah. You know, that's a big problem with Fenway. They added those seats up on the Monster and everything, mm-hmm. but, uh, man, that's, uh, that's a pretty penny for one person. I'll, I'll tell you this right now. I'm going to a Cubs game a week from tomorrow against the Braves, and we were all, me and my buddies were going to buy our tickets together, and we just didn't pull the trigger on it. One of my buddies paid 33 bucks for a ticket. I paid 47 
<laughs> and we're gonna just we're just gonna be sitting out in the bleachers. Man, forty seven bucks for a bleacher ticket. I see. I remember when I looked uh, when I went to the game when I lived in Millbank about six years ago, and uh, Angels went out there for the first time. We went, and I was looking at tickets. I got good seats. Uh, you know. Down the third base line sure. and kind of up a little bit. I don't know, just, just by the Bartman seats. Up? No, not way down there. They were up, kind of, probably close to third base, really up from that. Okay. I don't know in the stands, uh, not all the way up, but shaded and stuff like that. Because yeah. I want to be in the shade. I was right. summertime. I'm like, I'm not going to fry out there. Right. No way I'd sit in the bleacher seats. But I remember looking and I swear the bleacher seats online. I got them on. E- I think I bought them on eBay. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I thought everything was at least fifty bucks, even for the bleachers back then, and they were no good. Right. I mean, team wasn't uh, amazing, and you're out there with no shade and all this stuff. Right. And this is before the renovations. That was the other thing I was going to ask you about at some point. Was sure your thoughts on all those renovations? I thought it was terrible when it came out because you're kind of, you know, given the uh, people that put all those things on their rooftops the short end of the stick there, and all that money they invested. That's exactly it. I had a buddy of mine that just went out to the, uh, well, we're talking about him a couple weeks ago, my friend Jan. Remember the uh, handsome guy? He actually went back to, I mean, with a name like Jan, come on. But anyways, he went out to Wrigley Field, I believe it was last weekend, and he was on the one of the rooftops, and that they're right behind that massive jumbotron that they just put out there in right field. You you can see about half of of first base, and then it's just kind of like, well, I guess we can just (laughs) eat a bunch of tacos, drink a bunch of beer, and just, you know, watch the game on TV, I guess, or work on your tan, because you can't see a darn thing with uh, some of those rooftops because of... Like you said, all those renovations. That's a bummer. It is. I mean, I guess Rooftop that's a chance. Fun too. That's a chance you take, I suppose, over there. I remember walking there uh, around the park, and you see the signs, you know, saying what all you get there. You yes. can sign up for, and you get all the buffet and rah, 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 all the stuff. Is really cool, but then some of them have shade and everything too. The ones that don't, I'm like, yeah, I would never go to a game at this place. But I, th- I think I went to one rooftop game. I believe it was a hundred bucks all inclusive. That's a little pricey, but you know what? If you're going to be eating all the food that yeah. you do, and if you're going to be drinking all the, all the uh, drinks that you do, whether it be alcoholic or not, that's eh, not that bad of an investment to be honest with you. Yeah. That's what I thought. It was pretty cool. Cause you know, it's some stuff you can't get at the park and exactly. And I feel like you're not going to sit there and wait in a huge line either. Right. And, Quality might be a little bit better than ballpark. <laughs> Definitely, there's no question. So, uh, but uh, that's that's going to do it for us here today. Uh, talking about some baseball here. Enjoy some baseball right now. Get over to Fossum Field. Hey, if you miss the uh, Northern games that are right now in the top of the fifth, is that top five? I think that's top five, six two now. NSU, no top six. It's going to be top six here. Top six, uh, six yep. two Northern leads in that one. Uh, if you miss that, hey, games will start right back up at five o'clock. Aberdeen Smitty is have a doubleheader against Pier tonight. As well, and uh, more games this weekend, too, for Northern taking on Minot tomorrow. I'll start that up at, uh, I think that's noon. Yep, noon tomorrow. So uh, you've got that opportunity as well. And, of course, softball here in town as well. Show them some love. you got the big grill out tomorrow for that. And that's Senior Day, so we'll honor the seniors as they take on Crookston tomorrow at 1. And uh, game for today, doubleheader should be just underway there for them at Moxon Creek Softball Complex. That's going to do it for us. Back at it on Monday. Here to ESPN 1421 Check out the huge selection of pre-owned cars, trucks, SUVs, RVs advanced today at the Har Motors Bargain Center. They have over 60 vehicles in stock. Hurry in for the best selection because the inventory changes daily. The Har Motors Bargain Center has vehicles with payments as low as $99 a month. Great financing options are available. The Har Motors Bargain Center on harmotors.com. Ready, cross.